Okay. Hey, before I get started, I need a volunteer. Somebody that the laptop open that would be willing to do a thing in the talk. You can do it from your seat. You don't have to get up. Back there? That guy. Uh, just when I call on you, be ready to go to wordpress.org and download core and unzip it. That's it. I'll explain it in the talk. You don't have to show it to anybody. You don't have to prove your work. Just we're going to do that. Cool. All right. Everybody ready? We ready? House ready? All right. I got a lot of slides, so pay attention. I'm Dwayne. You can find all my stuff at mcdwayne.com slash WPCLI. For this talk, all the slides, all my GitHub repo. Uh, very quickly, I'm Dwayne. I work at a place called Pantheon. I'll get back to that. I love comic books, improv, karaoke a lot. Let's sing some karaoke tonight. I like knitting as well. Uh, you can find out more about me on Twitter. I love Twitter. Hit me up on Twitter. I love it. Um, in fact, if you just take a picture of me in front of this picture, it would make me happy. Uh, and then like tweet this out. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mauricio. Um, because this is an ongoing project for this year, for 2018. Uh, 2017, I spoke like 27 times and didn't do anything fun like this. So um, I work for Pantheon. We are a website management platform. It is elastic hosting. Any size website you can throw at us. And all sorts of awesome tools, like the WPCLI. I work with Pantheon out of the box. But that's what we're here to talk about, not where I work. But why the heck am I talking about WordPress command line interface? Because I believe if you don't know the why of a something, you don't really care about the whatever, Boils down to this. Just, just raise your hand if this is not true of your life. Yeah, we all do the same things over and over again and over again. Stop repeating yourself. It's a core thing of computer science. Do not repeat yourself. Dry. It's a thing to live by. Because robots, you can tell them what to do, and they're really, really good at doing the same thing over and over and over again, and doing really fancy things that I could not do myself manually if I tried for 10 years. Eh, maybe 10 years. But after a while, I would just get bored making pancakes. Uh, but now I'm ready for my magic tricks. Chris, if you are ready, sir, on the count of three, oh, wow, this is really small in this thing. On the count of three, you're going to go to WordPress. Don't load it up yet. Okay, somebody else, this guy. All right, on the count of three, you're going to go to WordPress.org and download Core and unzip it. Ready? We're going to race. Ready? Your mark, get set, go. Wow, it is really internet speeds are in here really slow. Can you keep? You got it unzipped? Yeah, I got it unzipped. Both of you do? All right, I have, I, have lost, I have lost this race. Oh, I was supposed to show you that this is just an Apache server, and it's like saving it. And uh, oh, yeah, here's my site um, that built uh, with menus that goes in Apache server a second ago. I forgot to show that. Um, it goes to my website, and uh, it was 2016, the best theme ever. Uh, my Twitter, Google, even email me there. I can play Magic Food. Um, oh, it didn't load the other thing yet. I caught it mid, mid build. I can play Blackjack. This is a fun game. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, but I built this site in the same time it took you to download and unzip and sit there and look at me a little bit. Still impressive. I've made a YouTube video of exactly this, and if you want to see it in the slides. Everything I'm going to show today, I made animated GIFs or videos of, so if I'm going way too fast, it's in the slides. Go find those. So what the heck just happened? What was that? What was that crazy site that I just built, and what was all this stuff running in the background that did stuff? Um, what? And if you notice, it's fun, uh, stuff's in Chinese on here, Hong Kong Chinese, uh, just for the heck of it. Anyway, um, so what the heck did I just do? Well, a little quick history of the internet and computers. There used to be punch cards. This is actually how the whole computer thing started, is punch cards for um, looms, actually. And they gave the idea to Babbage and those... Uh, uh, Lovelace and Associates say, hey, we can make other machines do other computational things. And eventually someone says, well, instead of putting these cards in a thing and having it batch process everything, what if we just put commands in one at a time and just typed them in? And they said, wow, that's a really, really good idea. And there, there came Unix. And somebody said, what if we just stack these on top of each other and let the machine read those in an order? And we got scripts. And then WPCLI happened. I said it's a very abbreviated, abbreviated story. Um, but that's it. That's the entire history of the internet, what you need. 
Um, so WPCLI is just a set of tools, scripts really, in PHP that are uh, for managing WordPress installs. And it's out on GitHub, it's open source. You can go out there and please contribute, absolutely. It's maintained by these fine people. Christy and Andrea have the credit of creating this thing back in the day. Daniel took over and in 2017, January, this got rolled into WordPress.org as part of the official project. Um, very, very proud of that. And WPCLI.org is the shortcut to get you there, but all the docs go out to WordPress.org now at this time, which is awesome. So how do we do this thing? This is a tutorial. If you want to play along at home, good, good luck. This goes really fast. So first we got to install this thing locally or on a server, and we're going to need some stuff for that. Everything in this deck is copy-pasted from WPCLI.org or developer tools somewhere, or the tool itself. But you're going to need Bash or Unix-like environment. Uh, for those Windows users, I've seen this work inside of Git Bash and Bash on Ubuntu on Windows, but really if you've got Local by Flywheel or um, Lando or any of those tools, it's right in there. You don't really need it uh, to install it separately. And, and anybody here on PHP 5.3? Good. You should be on 7 or later, please. Uh, but this is what you do, and is, this is how you install the thing. And I know this is the scariest part of the whole process. And if you've never used the command line before, if you're not like me, and you go to the internet to check your weather uh, by hitting the telnet server over at Weather Underground still, which is still up and running since 93, nonstop. Well, about 70% of the time it's nonstop. Um, and you're like me, like, what the heck is that? It's really easy. It's saying, hey, over the internet, copy the UR information from the URL, and put it in a file called wpcli.far, which is a packaged up set of PHP files ready to go. Change the permissions, shmodem, to uh, make that executable on my machine. And now let's move it somewhere useful. So if I type WP, I get that. The whole process looks something like this. And then type WP, and it's just there. It works. That's the test screen to say, hey, this, this does a thing. Success, that's the hardest part of using WPCLI. If you're scared of using it because, wow, it's going to be hard to learn, nope, the hardest thing is running three commands on a terminal. That's it. After that, yeah, we can do a lot of crazy stuff with it, and fun stuff with it, and very, very, very useful stuff with it. And at the end of the day, save a lot of time. Here's some of the stuff it can do that we're going to go through today. Uh, again, everything I made is animated GIFs, so if you're lost and you need to go back and consult, it'll be there. And of course, the ultimate authority of this is the commands themselves. You can go to the developer, well, this at URL, give these commands. But also, uh, these are built into the tool itself. I'll come back to that. Um, you should know the structure of commands if you're going to attempt to use this tool. Everything you'll ever do with WPCLI starts with WP. And then a command, like theme or plugin or up or uh, well, a bunch of them. And then a subcommand of that, like theme list or plugin update or plugin install. And then some parameters, like we saw in the last talk, um, dash dash activate. We'll activate a plugin that you've just installed. Uh, that's what happened on um, that script I ran earlier. There's some global parameters that will always work on anything you run, like prompt, which we'll get to is a fun one. Quiet, which will just makes it quiet, so it doesn't give you very verbose messages. And then there's some situational things. This varies around, but dry run is one of my favorites because it says, do it, but don't actually do it. Tell me what you would do if it actually ran. And I have find a lot of safety in that because sometimes I'm like, that makes no sense. Let me go back and see what I'm trying to do. Um, so you can type WP help in front of literally anything in the entire tool, and you get something that looks like this. One of the most beautiful parts of this project and why I get excited about it, one of the reasons I get excited about it, is all of the help docs come from the code itself. When you go to the website, all of that content came from the tool being built. Uh, it's there. I learned WPCLI on an airplane. Not kidding. I was bored. It's like, I should learn this tool, and it was just WP help and every command, and walk through it and learn the thing. So let's dig through the command list. Uh, how am I doing on time? Awesome. I am right on schedule. schedule. So we can do things like download core that fast, depending on your connection, of course. Uh, you can do things like, who loves making WP uh, config PHP by hand? Nobody. Um, so have a machine do it for you. In fact, I never remember what to do, so I just say dash dash prompt. Prompt will say, hey, I need these things. If it doesn't have a square bracket, it's mandatory. If it has a square bracket, it's optional. 
This isn't the most secure container environment in the world, I'll admit, but uh, I got there and it generated. And then you've heard of the five minute install. This is the five second install and how I install all of my WordPress sites that I ever work with. Uh, I just run dot bash that build script from my dash, uh, from my laptop, I'm sorry, from my desktop and it just runs and it builds me sites that do exactly what I want them to do. Search replace, arguably the most powerful tool in the whole arsenal. And this is how I found this tool in the first place because I completely hosed all of the URLs moving between environments for a site that I was building for fun. And I said, how am I gonna fix these URLs? And it turns out uh, it's old string, new string, and it just does it. So here, like, hello world, let's, uh, let's replace that with, uh, this is the first demo post. And there you go. And if you look back to the example site I was running earlier, yeah, that's how I replaced WCMI rocks right there uh, for the Justin Northern WordPress website, because it's not. You guys rock. Uh, with WPCALI's search replace. You can do this, I don't have it in the slide, but you can do this against SQL, or if you throw precise behind it, you can do it all in uh, the PHP. Do a PHP search replace. This becomes super powerful when you combine it with the X things like export. So if I'm gonna move, migrate from my dev server to a production server, I can kick out a new database with the absolute URLs completely replaced, ready to import, and it doesn't touch my dev at all. It just makes those changes in the new export as it's doing it. Pretty powerful. That's where we're talking about themes and this wonderful fun theme I found called 90s Retro. Um, yes, of course you can install themes with this. Here I'm actually activating it at the same time but instead of going through and waiting for screen paints, which just drive me nuts, waiting for screen paint, waiting for screen paint, waiting for screen paint, push a button, wait for a screen paint, wait for a screen paint, no. Type the line, there you go. Um, then you can do things like theme mod. I changed the background here, which is covered up by an image uh, on this particular one, to Wes Boss's favorite color in the world, badass, BADA55, which is the ugliest yellow, but it's fun to say, uh, BAD55. Um, you can delete themes. How many people have themes that they are not using on an install? Yeah, get rid of those. If you're not using them, they're just dead code waiting for a security vulnerability. Um, just seriously, get rid of them. Theme delete and just clean up after yourself. It's that quick. Uh, let's have some fun with the posts. We can generate posts. That's easy. Sorry about the screen resolution on these. But um, I don't like working with empty sites and I really don't like empty things either. So here I'm curling in First, I'm just building empty demos. And then I'm curling in data, this time baseball orum, baseball ellipsum. And there it is. There's my baseball lorem ipsum. Um, I can do interesting, fun things like post list, which of course I can, because I'm in bash, just export. And I can throw a format in there of CSV or JSON or uh, XML if I'm really trying to do something. Um, and there it is, a post list that I can full control over site. Who's ever inherited a site and is like, how am I gonna sort through these posts? Yeah, this is how you do it. Um, post delete, oh, I thought I replaced this image. Um, so here's a post list and let's just delete something real easy, uh, delete two. This is the wrong image, apologies. But it shows the thing, I deleted post two and it's no longer there. Uh, site empty, wow, this is a powerful command. How many get to the end of building a dev site and like, I gotta get rid of all these posts now? Yeah, site empty, it just does it for you. Anything that's content, just kick it out the window, we don't need it anymore. I'm ready to do something else with this site. Go from this site to site empty, yes. And just like that, it's gone. They're just gone. Menus, one of my favorite fun things to do. This varies wildly theme to theme. So I will tell you, do not write a one time, I'm gonna do this on all themes, because it might not work. Themes vary wildly on how menus work. So uh, in this particular theme, oop, I'm showing the wrong GIF here. I'm doing site empty the right way here. Anyway, um, here's where it works, where I'm throwing more in. Uh, I'd name the menu, put it in a place, place that menu, and then populate that menu, those three. So if you're always building the same kind of menus, all you gotta do is swap URLs and content descriptions and you basically have a scaffolding for building menus very, very, very quickly. Talk plugins, how am I doing on time? Again, I have a lot of slides and a lot of content and we're buzzing along. Um, 
Of course, you can install plugins and activate them, as we saw in the last talk. You can also update them. This is a pretty good way to use it. This is how, one of the things I do when I automate the updates on my website. It relies on this feature, the fact that it can see if something needs updated, and I can run the update. Uh, and scripts do that for me. Uh, you can do it either individually. There's dry run telling me what it would do, me saying, go ahead and do it when I release, erase dry run. And I can also say all. You probably shouldn't run dash dash all on a production site. This is another great argument for dev environments. Because uh, in a dev environment, eh, it blew something up, let's go fix it. Um, they can roll back. In a live environment, a little bit more embarrassing. And then you can do fun things if you know, this is in, actually Gutenberg's installed doing this. Um, uh, if you know the short codes that you want to populate a post with to do something like make a functional blackjack game and magic food happen inside of an actual post, well, just make the post from a command line when you install the plugin. That's two steps, and I have working functional things on my site from the time it's first spun up. Users. Of course, you can do things like create users. In fact, this is one of the other things I wanted to demo live. I only got two live demo things here. OK, command not found. There we go. We're back to normal. Sorry if you can't see this. Um, we're going to do uh, user. Uh, user. Can't find post 22. Of course, it can't find post 22 because it aired earlier. So let's look at wonderful world of VI for a second. Uh, actually, I won't edit. But you can see here at the bottom, I've created one, two, three, four, five, six users. The users are now, because when I said user list, normally a user list, as I show over in here, a user list will throw, show me what users are on the site, including email. For this demo, I put up a live form and said, hey, if you want to help me with my site, um, Bob, Brad, Chris, Chris Wales, he put his full name in there, me, uh, Guy, and Jim, real people, uh, all said, okay, I'll fill in this form. And they filled in, and it went to a CSV file that got piped out that I uploaded here as data as a data one CSV. Script ran through, created all of them, and then created comments for all of them on a post that doesn't exist because an error happened earlier in a process. Anyway, uh, where I'm saying only the usernames exist is because when you display anything, from a list, you can regulate it to just show certain fields. So yeah. how you would do that, uh, actually, we'll do this, vi user, lovely vi. This is a bash script. And that's what I would love for you all to take away from here, is the WPCLI is awesome and a time saver in and of itself if you're just getting to the command line and doing a thing. But you can also start doing clever and very useful things with bash scripts. The real bash scripts I use for generating sites on my own, my demo sites, wow, this is really small. Boop, changes all your resolutions. Is this. Uh, it's a laundry list of things I turn on and off, but when I create demo sites, bam, I run one script and it just does it. All the terminus stuff I'll get back to you later. Uh, but we can start using these things to do things creatively. Back to users. Users, it can do things like add roles. Do you know that a single user can have multiple roles within WordPress? It's completely allowed. Did you know that you can modify the capabilities of all of those users? You can, or all of those um, uh, roles. You can. Uh, you don't have to have a plugin or nothing. Just do it. Uh, there's the wonderfully documented out on uh, roles and capabilities, and you can start mixing and matching. So if you want a subscriber who, for some reason, has plugin edit rights, um, you can do it. If you want authors that can't delete things, you can do it. Um, whatever you dream up, it's just part of core. Um, user list, delete, you can delete any user, of course. You can do it in batch. Uh, this is great if you're working with uh, a lot of people and suddenly groups change, you need to revoke access immediately. Hooking this up with a CSV is a user delete script. Just, pff, let's just kick them all out and be done with it. All right, I'm wrapping up. Uh, database, how many people love looking at database tables? Well, it's good to know what those tables are. So database, DB tables does that. You can also do fun things like export. And then uh, DB CLI. Oh, uh, yeah, the MySQL CLI is there. Is there anything special to get to it? WP CLI will get you there. WP DB CLI gets you to the MySQL DBI, or MySQL CLI. I said DBI, CLI. 
Um, and you can do fun, interesting things against your database, if you so choose. And if you mess things up, there's this feature called DB Reset, where it will take you back to nothing. And then you can import that back if you did earlier, and you're right back to where you left off. First time I saw this, it blew my mind. Thanks, Sean Hooper, for this awesome magic trick. But this is actually useful in real life if you blow up a database. <laughs> I've done that before. Um, and then we get to the really awesome stuff. I've been saving the best for last, because everything else is eh, just grinding along. Um, scaffold. How many people use child themes every time, no exceptions? You're doing it right. Thank you very much. Uh, parent themes are there to catch in case your child theme completely gets hosed and something just goes horribly wrong. Child themes are a pain if you manually construct them. I will admit this. Child theme from scaff scaffold child theme is one line to run where you name the child theme, tell it what parent you want, and it puts everything in place for you. Everything. You can even run activate the same line, and now I'm running a child theme of 2016 on this site in this particular example. This works on almost anything. I just chose to do it with 2016 because I like 2016 a lot, and I think it deserves child themes. Um, plugin scaffolding. Uh, actually, we saw in the last talk he used this to make his plugin, but he also turned off the tests. WPCLI will build you test suites and tell you the scaffolding. If you dig into like what it actually builds, like here I'm about to show it more. Here is the test framework built for me. I just got to fill in the dots. Uh, and I got my unit test almost built from the time I started my plug build, uh, plugin build. And it would get to Gutenberg block. How many people make plugins at all in any way, shape, or form? Are, how many people, keep your hands up, how many people is Gutenberg ready with your plugin? Yeah, really easy way to get there is here. It's not going to do the work for you. It's not going to put the actual things in place, but it's going to give you the framework of what your plugin. So if you look, look at Zach Gordon's information on it or anywhere else, the, the, the codec or the GitHub um, repositories, uh, this is the framework of how to put these things in place. This is part of the core tool. Just uh, scaffold block, and you are on the path to making yourself Gutenberg ready, and we need to work on that. Language, last one. One of my favorite things about WordPress is its accessibility. I am very proud of 100% accessibility score on my website. Uh, and I think that, in general, accessibility of making everyone in the world able to use a tool is a great thing. Part of that is language, absolutely. Um, I chose Hong Kong Chinese, or Chinese Hong Kong, um, at random off the list, because it started with a Z. Um, it was one of the last things I saw. Um, but that's it. If, it's that simple to translate to another language. So you can develop in your own language and have it translate over. And all the admin screens become whatever you say. All of the, uh, it doesn't change your content, but the site itself now is in that other functional language. So if you're working with an international developer, flipping back and forth between languages is literally one line. It's activate. Bonus commands, stuff I didn't know where else to put, but I love it. DP, WP shell. How many people love running an arbitrary PHP on a server? Yeah, it's scary. But you can do it. If sometimes it's really, really helpful. Like, what on earth is this doing? Let me get this, get this info and just spit it out in terminal. WP Shell gets you that access. This doesn't work globally on all the CLIs that this works within. I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, who loves Cron? Yeah, well, that, you can run it from, from here. Uh, for those of you who don't love Cron, it's actually pretty good if you know what uh, if you spend the time to actually investigate deeply. But you can do things like cron event run all or activate specific cron events, and it makes testing this so much easier because WP cron uh, through the GUI, um, you can, but this just makes it a lot faster and easier. There's so much more to it. This is meant as a precursor of just to get your taste of what's going on. You can go back and look at all these slides to see functional examples of everything that works. I'll fix those slides that were messed up earlier. Um, but guess what? This is extensible. You don't have to take it off the shelf and say, oh, that's all it can do. No, it is very straightforward to extend this out. I have not had the personal need to, but one of my favorite talks in the history of the world is right here, WordPress TV. You look at Ben Byrne, Accelerating Custom, and this is all in the slides you can have, um, Accelerating Custom. He works for uh, a company that uses um, the same theme everywhere, but it's a very, Minimal framework. 
And they built their own scaffolding tools out of WPCLI called Produce. And it puts it in this thing called Crate, which is the name of their theme. Clever idea. But this in action is like, well, let's just insert mustache code and just modify those variables. And that's how we'll do all our custom dev. So you can get a completely custom site where the standards are very rigid, but you can do anything inside of this wonderful framework. And all of their devs can communicate a lot faster. They can build faster. That talk is amazing. It blew my mind last year when I saw it. Um, so go check that out. That was at um, Seattle, WordPress Seattle, or WordCamp Seattle. Um, WCLI also works within other CLIs. Uh, I work with Pantheon, and part of the reason I love WPCLI is we use it a lot. Um, but we have our own command line called Terminus, command line tool called Terminus. So for a lot of things I do, I'm going to jump back to my terminal. Um, sorry, this is really small up there. Uh, let's do it clear. I can do things like, hey, let's go look at the plugins that are actually live on my active site because I wrapped Terminus, which calls my platform to do a WPCLI call against a specific site and then pass in that command. So here's what I'm actually running. Um, turning Gutenberg off and on depending on the day. I'm still testing it for a bunch of stuff. But um, I use WPCLI or WP Markdown still for how I write everything. Um, it's also a desktop server, DSI, uh, wraps it in. Flywheel has this pre-installed, uh, sorry, local by Flywheel has this pre-installed. Uh, just uh, SSH into uh, that site and it'll pop up command box and you have just type WP and it's just there. Uh, this is true of some platforms. Your mileage may vary. Uh, sometimes if you have a VPS, you can just install it and run it. Anyway, um, I'll leave this up while I'm getting questions. Um, is there any way to export products from, like, let's say, a WooCommerce store to uh, a CSV to those? Um, I don't know. I'll be honest. Uh, I, I very rarely personally develop WooCommerce. But does anyone know? Can you, WPCLI, export products? Well, yeah, well, that's interesting. Would the same? I believe so. I think so. Yes, we believe so. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Wu has their own set of WPCLI commands. So absolutely, I wouldn't go investigate that. <laughs> I personally don't have the experience on that. Uh, yeah, to run it, actually, it's going to need a working um, directory, WordPress directory. Uh, or actually, no, it just needs a working database, doesn't it? Yeah, you can install this to install WordPress. Yeah, once the FAR files, as long as you're running PHP 5.3. whatever, honestly, just run 7. That's what I'm running. Uh, or later, 7.0, uh, 7.2. It'll just work. Uh, FAR files, pretty lightweight and should just run. It does expect a database to be there. Can it run against multiple WordPress sites? It depends on how you're doing it. Um, yes, the answer is, the short answer is yes. Where if you're using a, a tool like Pantheon, uh, you just point it at the individual sites for the command. You can also do remoting. Um, Sean Hooper has a whole talk about that, where he manages hundreds of sites through WPCLI. You're gonna have to do a script to do that because you're gonna have to hit multiple remotes at that. Um, but it, it's all you can write your own bash anything, and, and you can do it multiple commands. I, I think I right there, and then over there, and then appear. You got? Do you have? Okay. Stupid question. That's not stupid. Git? Oh, no, you're going to use Git to do Git. Um, this is to manipulate the install itself, not to manage code away from. Um, now you've said that, it'd probably be worth a go look and see in the command list, but if you're using GitHub, just I would say just use Git. It's, it's, it's pretty efficient and fast. You can tie things together. Right here. You got a question. I thought you yeah, did. So, um, can you then you. create like a Yeah. yeah. Uh, underscores and then uh, custom, um, uh, that's custom fields and then I generate the, the, the site. One of the scaffold command is underscores. Scaffold underscores. And then you can throw in a ton of stuff behind that. Have it curl in um, anything you need and yeah, build. And it's extendable. So if it doesn't do it out of the box, crack it open, make it do it. If you can do it with PHP, you can absolutely do it with the command line. Awesome. Thank you. And then right there. Or no, it was back there and then you.
Yeah. Um, if you run porcelain, it will show you the password. Porcelain is um, show me what I did and give me the valuable information. Um, and you can make it be quiet so it wouldn't show up at all. It would show you running the command. It wouldn't show you the export. But if you're trying to avoid putting those data in the terminal itself, just upload a separate config file from somewhere else, and that's your safest bet. Yeah, well, no, that was one of the prompts. I went really, really fast, but um, I could just run that again, actually. Uh, where is my other terminal? Uh, I'm using, um, oh, crap, I'm in VI. Hold on. I've got to remember how to get, quit VI. Okay. Um, I don't know why it's cutting off the bottom here. Uh, so if I do WP core config um, dash dash prompt, we can just walk through the prompts here real quick. So yeah, database password is right there. So, I'm sorry, what was the question? So uh, you have one line that like, defines the same line. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I one, it's a prompt that ends the password. Um, prompt is an all or nothing as far as I know. Uh, however, it's just bash. So if you wanted to pass that in from another ver from another data point, that's what I did in. Is this no? Crap! Let's try and do that thing again. Kill that. Um, Wow, that's annoying. Nope, nope, nope. Kill that. Uh, just work. Can I just do this? I can just do that. It'd be hilarious. I can just do that. Oh, whoa, whoa. That's not what I wanted to show at all. That was the opposite of what I wanted to show. Um, kill that so I don't actually trade anything. Um, yeah, here it is. Here's like how I pass it in. Um, is one one thing, but no, you can't. Prompt is an all or nothing, as far as I know. And then, um, oh, I was answering the other question. This one, um, mass add user add. Uh, here, I'm just passing in a, a bash um, data field. It could be a CSV, it could be anything. And all you're doing is changing the delimiter. Here's the old delimiter, or the the new delimiter is comma in this particular case because in CSV, it could be um, parsed with JSON, it could be anything. And then um, you just pass those variables in at at the time. You can do it that way. Yeah. Uh, if you already are super familiar with shell scripts, this is going to be an amazing weapon in your arsenal. If you are not familiar with shell scripts, it's fun. It is really fun to make computers do fun stuff. All right. How are we doing on? Whoa, we're about right at time. Um, oh. Another question? Yeah. Yes. Or ZSH, absolutely. It needs a Unix-like environment. So I've run this on CrashBang, FreeBSD. Um, Puppy Linux has issues, but Puppy Linux always has issues. Uh, damn small. Um, I've tested this on a lot of things, and it doesn't matter the terminal. If, it can, if it's got PHP present and it can actually communicate properly to a database, not everything can, um, then yeah, it will run. Uh, yeah, um, so I'm gonna kill the screen so we can walk out. But uh, so once a week, once a week, um, Cron wakes up and pings Circle CI to go see if any updates are needed on my site, the site that I was showing earlier. Um, if they do exist, let's go try update them all in a separate environment. Then run backstop JS to see if that matches what's in production. If it matches, let's kill. Uh, let's just kick it all out to production. If it's not, send me a Slack message. So you can do things like that based on the information you can feed off of Bash scripts and WPCLI. That's my favorite use for it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you.